When bosses don't pay attention to the knowledge that comes from the personal experience of team members doing the work on the ground, in the trenches, so to speak, with the intricacies and the material at hand, well, they run the risk of slowing down the show. Sometimes, of course, team members, especially the junior ones, they don't know what they don't know. So how do we square this away? Dialogue. A couple of months ago, I was trimming the trees in my garden. There's just too much shade, the grass. So one particular Saturday, myself and my gardener, Gerard, and his brother, James, we went wild. We were cutting, pulling, clearing. We removed whole bushes, whole trees, and we cut back some of the larger branches on some of the bigger ones. Now, part of the shade problem in my garden is actually from my neighbor's tree. This massive Brazilian pepper tree that completely blocks all the sun from hitting my back garden. So I asked him if we could trim it back, and he was fine with that. It was already quite near the end of the day, but we got to work. He even lent us his saw and some clippers. I used them both. But I wasn't as impressed with his tools as I was with mine. My chainsaw and my long handle clippers were actually better. Anyway, because we started pretty late on his tree, we didn't get a whole lot done before the guys had to call it a day. So my neighbor said, well, why don't you guys come back tomorrow and I'll, I'll pay you guys for the day and you can keep going. So of course, I was pumped about that because now I didn't have to pay for my neighbor's tree to get cut and I was going to get the benefit of sun on my grass. I even said that they could use my chainsaw and my long-handled clippers as well when they came back. The next day was a Sunday, so my family and I headed off to church and we only got back late morning. And when we got back, I went into the back garden to see how they were going, how the progress was. I expected to see that they'd done quite a bit, but there wasn't much progress as it turned out. And I was surprised, specifically because of how much we had accomplished the day before. And now it was three hours later and not much had happened. It didn't take me long to realize why. My chainsaw was sitting there on the ground and James was using my neighbor's saw. I asked him why. And sheepishly he said, well, the neighbor said he must use this one. I could tell that just like me, James knew that my saw was better. But he wasn't about to disagree with his boss for the day. Anyway, while we were chatting, the neighbor came out and he saw that James's brother, Gerard, was using my long-handled clippers to trim some of the smaller pieces. And he picked up his clippers and he came over and he said, hey, use these, these are better. And of course, Gerard, just like his brother, obeyed. Now, the only person out of all four of us who hadn't tried all the tools was the one calling the shots. My neighbor's assumption was based on his own experience of his own tools. The rest of us knew better. My tools were better on all counts. But he was in charge and his employees, they weren't about to disagree with him. When bosses don't pay attention to the knowledge that comes from the personal experience of team members doing the work on the ground, in the trenches, so to speak, with the intricacies and the material at hand, well, they run the risk of slowing down the show. Of course, a lot of the time leaders do know better. They've come through the ranks, they've bumped their head, they've learned some lessons, they have, you know, meaningful leadership to offer. Sometimes, of course, team members, especially the junior ones, they don't know what they don't know. It's a mixed bag, for sure. So how do we square this away? Dialogue. And psychologically safe and open cultures of humility and learning. Sometimes the team does actually know better. Sometimes the leader does. And the only way to know is to talk, to speak up, to listen, if you're the leader, to elicit feedback from those who follow you. We're all in danger of blind spots. But a humble culture where dialogue is welcomed, well, that'll solve many of the blind spots. You see, the reality is, it's the leader's blind spots that cost the team the most, because ultimately it's usually the leader who gets to make the call. Next time your team is tackling something new, talk about it. If you're a leader, ask what the experience is of the material, the nuances, the intricacies, Elicit feedback from the people on the ground or in the tree, in this case. Don't assume that what you know and the tools you used 10 years ago are the best things for the job. And if you're a team member, well, your boss may very well have good reasons for certain decisions, reasons that you aren't fully aware of. But don't be scared to say, actually, for this tree perched on this branch, at this angle, trying to cut that branch, these clippers are better. Unless we can dialogue 
around the dynamics at play, the job at hand, and the tools that we have at our disposal, then our teams will not be as effective as they can be. It takes an emotionally intelligent team to do that. At Migro, we're on a mission to build an emotionally intelligent world. Would you join us? Inward and upward.